Hi, my name is Akshit and I work as a developer relations engineer at Maxim AI. In this video, we are going to see how you can manage context using Maxim platform for your agents. In the last video, we built a HR agent uh, using tool calls and you must have seen that I used a word called context. So context is nothing but a piece of information that needs to be provided to the LLM so that it can provide you the inference or the output based on that. For example, uh, in our HR agent, we connected the HR policies of the company as the context. And when the user asked some information about the maternity leave, then HR agent referred to this context, which had the information about that uh, policy and gave the inference based on that. So this context can be in the form of plain text. It can also be a PDF. It can also be some information in the image. But at the end, you save this context in a vector database in the form of embeddings, which are nothing but vectors. Let's try to understand this with the help of this diagram. And as soon as you have information about this, we will jump to Maxim AI platform and I'll teach you how you can manage your context using simple API calls on Maxim. So let's start from the scratch. First of all, you have a long, very long context, right? As you can see on my screen, these are some of the HR policies of the techies company. And this is still very short. In real production use cases, you might have a very long context. And for every query, the whole context is not useful and should not be provided to the LLM. It might hallucinate. So based on the user query, you need to take the query, vectorize it, match it with the required embeddings. So for every query, you should only provide the relevant context to your LLM. So for that, what we do is we take the long context, we divide it into certain number of chunks. Every chunk is vectorized using an embedding model. So most commonly we use text embedding ADA 002. And now you have N chunks, but these chunks are of embeddings not plain text. As soon as you have the embedding chunks, you can save those chunks in a vector database. It can be Pinecone, ChromaDB, or any other vector database. So our first task is now done. We took a long context, which was present in the form of a PDF or a plain text. We divided that information into chunks. We vectorized it, got the embedding chunks. And those chunks we saved in the vector database. Next thing that comes is the user query. The user comes on the platform and puts a query. Let's say, what is the leave policy in techies? Now we don't need to provide all the HR policies as context to the LLM for this query. We only need to fetch the information that is related to the leave policies and that information to go to the LLM as the context. So for that, we need to find out the similar embeddings from the context that match with the user query. So we again take the user query, create a user query embedding using the same embedding model. Now it's just a mathematical problem. Now we just need to compare the two vectors you can use cosine similarity algorithm to find out the similarity scores. Whichever embeddings match with the user query, those embeddings can be returned to the user back. So at the end, we get the relevant context chunks and this piece of information, which is concise, can be sent to the LLM as the required context for this user query. I hope you understand this. Now, this is how a generic rag pipeline looks like. And I hope you must be having this in your backend. So as soon as you have it ready, you can go to the Maxim platform and go to the context sources. You can simply add your API, which can be helpful for getting the context back based on the user query. So I'll just click on this button, add a context source. In this video, we will be working with the API context sources. Let's call it as techies, HR policy context. Let's click on add context source. Now over here, add your endpoint that can be used to fetch the required context. In the body, you can define this query and put the user input, which will be used to fetch the relevant matching similar uh, context chunks. You can write your input over here. In my use case, I have a very short context. So instead of fetching the relevant uh, chunks, I would be interested to get the complete HR policy document. So for that, I'll be just making a get call, but this is up to you. If you want to fetch the relevant chunks, I've already shown you how you can make a post call provide a input and get the relevant chunks. So in my case, I'm just making a get call run. And you can see I got my context back, which is the complete HR policy document. Great. Now I can just save this uh, context source. Now if I go to my prompts, in our previous video, uh, I showed you that how you can put the context directly over here as the variable value. But instead of this, what I'll be doing is I'll be attaching a context source. So you can see if I click on this button, uh, you can see techies HR policy context. I'll attach this. So now I've attached the context source. Now let's try to test it if this context is successfully fetched or not. So I'll say, uh, tell me 
about the leave policy at techies run it so you can see this is the output uh, paid time off sick leave parental leave public holidays and you can see this is the context that it fetched uh, via the context source uh, via the api so this is the context that was used to answer this uh, query great so in this video i showed you how you can import your context sources via an api in the further videos we will be also seeing how you can attach your context sources as files i hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new to get started with maxim you can check out evals.new or you can also sign up to the link in the description till the next video please enjoy your ai journey thanks a lot Thank you.